In the darkness of the night, we found a small prefab two-story shack that looked like a warehouse. The lights are off. Are they sleeping? Let's knock. Rena and Mio neared the shack, which didn't really look like a place people would live. They had such a beautiful shrine, so I figured they'd live in an equally beautiful house. It was far from what I had expected. Rika-chan! Satoko-chan! Are you there? Brenna shouted up towards the second floor. Her voice was restrained at first, but it steadily grew louder. No answer. In fact, there wasn't any sort of activity in the house at all. They might be sleeping. Let's wake them up. Mion banged on the shutter with both hands, and the loud sounds echoed into our surroundings. They would have to notice this much noise. They would turn on the light in their room, fling open their windows, and yell, What time do you think it is? That, however, wasn't happening. There was absolutely no response. Mion stopped slamming her fist on the shutter, and a sudden silence fell over us. The silence aroused terrible thoughts in us. I could feel the blood draining from my face. It's locked. I wonder if we can get in somehow. Rena showed no signs of stopping. It didn't look like she would admit they weren't there until we went inside and saw for ourselves. That refusal to give in gave me strength. The second story windows wouldn't be locked. I'll give them a try. Keichan, a ladder. Mion brought over a ladder that was standing against the house. The footing was a little unstable for me to be climbing it, but Mion held the ladder firmly in place for me. I hadn't climbed too many ladders. My inexperience with them exposed, I climbed up one step at a time and tried to open each window on the second floor. Michan, I'm going to go check the main house just to be sure, okay? I'll be right back. Rena darted away. What? A main house? It's the Fudude family's actual house. After her parents passed away, I think it's been left like that. Ah, right. Rika-chan's parents. They passed away, huh? At that point, I recalled something else. Wasn't Satoko living here too? Satoko's also an orphan. Her parents fell from a cliff because of Oyashirosama's curse. Then her older brother, Satoshi-kun, he disappeared. Satoshi? I've heard that name before. I remembered. He was the one who had disappeared last year because of the curse. Ever since then, Satoko and Rika-chan have been living in this shack. Neither of them is any family, but at least they're together. They help each other out. Rena said main house, didn't she? Wouldn't it be easier to live there? The curtains were drawn, so I couldn't get a good look inside to see, but... Two young girls living together. Seemed like a pretty tough life. I think she tried that at first. She said it was hard, though, because it reminded her of her parents. I had no idea. I feel really bad for them. They were normally so cheerful at school that I had never even realized an atom of this. Rika-chan and Satoko-chan, they have it hard, huh? She's cursed. Huh? Suddenly, Mion said something in such a low voice that it sounded like she was really cursing someone, and I didn't let it slide. I turned around on the ladder to face her and asked again. Mion, what did you just say? I said, she's cursed. Mion, still holding onto the ladder, brought her head up to look me in the eyes. As soon as our eyes met, an absolute zero jolt of electricity surged through my body. Mion's eyes clouded over, and within them boiled and bubbled, a stew of chaos. 
They whirled around and around like a raging sea, and bubbles floated to the surface. I had at some point been trapped on this ladder, like being cornered on a dead-end street. M Mion, you... Why are you making that face? I intended to follow that up with, you're going too far with this joke and give her a forced smile. However, on such uneven footing as I was, the only thing that came out of my mouth was a hoarse groan as I desperately struggled to not let nausea overwhelm me. Satoko Hojo. She's been cursed by Oyashiro-sama. Mion answers with a response to something I never asked, as if replying to somebody else's question. The only people who fell from the park observation platform were her parents. Only her parents, who treated her like dirt, died that day. She was the only one to survive. Then she was sent to live with her aunt, who treated her cruelly, and the aunt was killed on the night of Watanagashi by some deviant, who beat her to death so violently her brains were everywhere, and her head an entirely different shape by the end of it. Then Satoshi-kun, who always protected her. He suddenly disappeared on her birthday. Someone made him disappear, even though he wasn't abusing her. The police judged him to have run away from home, but Satoshi-kun wasn't the kind of person who would do that. He was always earnest. He would never ask for anyone else's help. He would always drag himself through everything with hard work alone. He worked so hard he nearly ground his bones into dust, all for his one and only little sister. And yet someone made him disappear. She was the only thing he lived for, and yet someone made him disappear. Poor, poor Satoshi-kun. He was never rewarded, that Satoshi-kun. How ungrateful that child is. She is cursed. All who get near her suffer the same fate. The curse kills them, or the curse makes them disappear. She cannot have any relief. She cannot have any relief. It's probably Satoko's fault that Rika-chan disappeared too. It has to be. 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 Has to. Has to. Has to. Has to. Mion was mumbling words over and over that were no longer coherent. Her shoulders were trembling so hard that I could feel it through the ladder. I almost lost my footing, which made me realize just how far away the ground really was. C calm down, Mion. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I wasn't sure if she even heard me. Mion rocked back and forth, and that rocking and trembling was becoming even more violent. H help me. The, the, the ladder, it's falling. Help me! Help! 